Coming up on Half Mile of Hell. You'll have one night that all hell breaks loose. I could have his baby tonight, and I bet he'd still go. I don't see him sponsoring your tarp. I didn't care for the look on his face. I'm not lying. I got on just about the top of free girl. He probably sitting in that trailer right over there, not doing a damn thing. I just wanted to kill him. It, it was going to get ugly in a hurry, I'll say that much. It's the West's original extreme sport. Four horses hitched to a wagon, racing hell-bent for leather around a half-mile track. The stakes are high, and disaster is only a heartbeat away. These are the Cowboys, and these are their stories. So hang on tight, because you're about to ride the Half Mile of Hell. It's only hours before the first horn sounds at the Rocky Mountain Turf Club Derby. The heavy rain that canceled racing in Medicine Hat has left its mark here in Lethbridge. Chad Harden is the first driver to discover the slippery situation. Southern Alberta is usually the driest part of the country, and right now it seems like every time we come around down here, we have trouble with the rain and the moisture. And I'm thinking the farmers should start paying us to come here just so their crops keep growing around this country. The entire place is a swamp, as a frustrated Rick Fraser soon finds out. They say this place is a desert? Yeah. I have a hard time believing that. Chad's rig is trapped in the mud, and it's time to call in the heavy machinery. 35 other chuck wagon teams are supposed to arrive today. With dozens of trucks and trailers and over 500 horses, no one wants to set up in the mud unless the races are a go. So chuck wagon drivers and the racetrack committee meet early to figure things out. Like, like You've got people scattered all over the place, from High River to Pan Hills, Okotoks to Medicine Hat. Is there more guys coming today? Yeah, they're all sitting and waiting. There is no thought of canceling races where we may postpone one and move it back a day. But all we're deciding on this right today is if it's a safe environment to operate in. Like, I think they're in feels good what I've seen just walking, eh? Here in set rail is that ridge there is, that's a killer. The pressure to run is intense. Fans have bought tickets. Sponsors have spent hundreds of thousands of dollars on chuck wagons. With the right combination of sun and wind, the track could dry in time to race, but no one will move until a call is made. Two hours away, Mark Sutherland waits for that call. Desperate to rescue his season from an unfortunate start, he needs every race possible to aid his climb up the world standings. I'd like all the shots I can to gain back where I want to be, and then if we cancel a day, that's one shot that I can't gain on the pack. And right now, I need all the shots I can get to gain on the pack. Terry's here, so we just need clippers, so we need to take them two down. Though his father is at the opposite end of the pack, he's just as eager to race. Kelly Sutherland is fourth in the world standings going into this event. But even though his eye is on the number one spot, Kelly knows you don't force a bad situation. When you have a, a racetrack designed for thoroughbreds, they design the water to run off the racetrack. When it hits the infield, you can develop a very soft area, especially if the water stands. If they don't get that hard packed, uh, you can upset a wagon pretty quick there. So, you know, hopefully that that area is, is good and solid so those wagons can skid because uh, the only time you have an upset is when a wagon doesn't skid. I mean, if they can skid, they just slew sideways. In Lethbridge, the track is shaping up, but the deadline nears. I mean, you know what I mean? It's hard as a rock some places, yeah. and, then you, and then it's like, yeah. but it's got to eat that base is right there. That's what I'm saying to you. If they work it, because look at the top's dry. When you're walking, it's just like slop underneath. It's kind of hard on top, but once you bust through that crust, you know, so they need to open it up and keep it breathing, get it dried out, but 
They don't want to mess with it too much because there's racehorses here as well. And wagons tear up tracks a little bit. Okay, can I have that? What's the weather like there? Same thing. Now, are we canceled for tonight or postponed? We will have a definitive answer right at 1 o'clock. The wind's starting to pick up. It's clearing up over here. Time is running out. If drivers are going to pull in, they need to pull in now. Why would we want to run and damage the track? I think we should race, really. Let's do it. And I don't think you put on a very good show for your fans either when it's like this. It's just up in the air whether we're going to even run there the first night or the second night or postpone or what we're going to do. But Mother Nature gives us a break. We'll be racing wagons. Rain and muddy conditions have made it difficult for drivers setting up camp in Lethbridge. The organizing committee has wrestled with the decision all morning. Now, the word spreads. Hey, hey, I just got word they canceled tonight. No, I'm not kidding you. They won't let us run on the track on Monday. I, I have no idea. That's all I've heard. That's a pits for all of us, too. Oh, yes. It has been very frustrating here. No one's to blame, it's just mother nature and you can't chew the racetrack up for a race day. So you just sit in the barn and hopefully it dries out for the next day. While the drivers find something to fill their time, Chad's pregnant wife, Dory, doesn't have any concerns. Lethbridge is her favorite stop on the circuit. So there better not be any pressure points that you're touching here to bring on labor. <laughs> Getting a manicure and pedicure from one of our sponsors is always a treat. We've had them for the last three years, and to have them consider the wife, you just feel like a princess and a queen all over again. Do I deserve spa treatment? Boy, do I ever. Especially the state I'm in, nine months pregnant. <laughs> oh, that's lovely. All right. Fantastic. Don't quote me, but I think I could be the only driver's wife that gets a spa treatment. When he's not racing, Chad Harton is thinking of other ways to pay back his sponsors. Some guys, if we have a rain out, they get paid their money, but they don't do nothing for their sponsors, so some of their sponsors get a little upset with that. I try to go the extra mile in case there's a rain out. At least we can entertain their customers and, and have fun with it. Oh, hey, to go, Skippy. We decided to go out with the sponsors and just become sort of an annual event where we go and play golf here, a little part three, of course. Oh, whoa, whoa, whoa! One guy couldn't believe I shot that good. Oh, no, in the sand trap. Tell you the truth, on a part three, you can see a lot of whack, and I can't say the other word right now. <laughs> no, we just have a lot of fun with it and try to do our best. And everywhere Chad goes, his renamed mascot follows. Oh, Skippy! <laughs> Just over there on the second hill, see it? Skippy, Skippy did very well, very entertaining. I'm not too sure how he could manage holding his head up and swinging the ball, but did very good. The big belly got in the way a little bit. Entertained some other kids on the golf course, some other people, so. A part of the promotions and package of Skippy being around. Oh, look at that! Safe. Oh, look at that shot! Woo! Yeah. I have to make the shot just to tie him. <laughs> While Chad has fun on the golf course, Rick Fraser uses his time off to scout. This is your latest investment? Good chuck wagon horses are hard to find. Yeah, I'm looking for a... A big, strong horse, just like this guy. He's very nice, very nice to handle. He hasn't got a mean hair on him. Denny Dorchester, Rick's uncle, is a man who knows horses. He trains thoroughbreds at the Lethbridge track. He's had a couple of vet scratches, and just grace yeah. is not going for him. It's early in the season, and this is more of a scouting mission for Rick. Up horses here. Look at him right now in order for the fall. You know, if you see something, keep an eye on him. 
If you pick up a horse right now, the other horses aren't going to accept him. It takes time. It's like you getting thrown in with a bike gang. <laughs> the guy doesn't do too well for the first while. Suddenly, opportunity knocks. They're making it tough here for a thoroughbred because they're riding uh, mixed the mixed allowance. Like well, they left quarter horses in there. Will they? I have a horse for you. No, not this is no bull. You have phone Sandy Creighton. He's in shape and he's standing at home. He can't go far enough. Get him down here. Hello, Kaylee. Hey, Kaylee, did we get the papers from Donelda for Pope? Yeah. Good deal, because he's just become a racehorse again. It's a good day for Rick. Sometimes selling a horse he can't use is as good as buying one he can. At the Sutherland Ranch, tension is brewing among the barn hands. Where's Clean at? Clean's probably sitting in that trailer right over there, not doing her thing, probably picking his nose and maybe having a cigarette. I am making more of an effort than they think. But because they don't like me or despise me already, it's harder for them to see that. Clean's pretty good, you know, he he tries. Uh, Moose and, and him get along pretty good. I think he's fitting in well. Could it be Kelly isn't seeing the full picture? It's a team environment, and everyone has to pull their own weight. Oh, he set up a chair. Yeah. Do you hear that? A chair, probably for him to sit on. That's probably what he set up, a chair for himself to sit on, because he had a hard day so far. The only thing I care about is if he talks to me and talks to me with a little bit of dignity and respect. And if not, then I'll talk to you the same way you talk to me. The situation is getting ugly. As Kelly waits to find out when they'll race in Lethbridge, the tension among the barn hands is about to boil over. On his farm near Okotoks, Alberta, Mark Sutherland bides his time, waiting for word on the track conditions for tomorrow's races. It's a bit of free time to play with the horses and tend to a retired champion named Art. My dad bought a horse in, in Edmonton, and in fact, when we got him, he had a bowed tendon as big as any horse uh, we'd ever seen. We thought if we can heal that up, we can save this horse's life and he might turn out to be a good one. That's, you know, that's what we do. We buy lottery tickets and this was a cheap lottery ticket. W what happened is he turned into a superstar. Everything I had that uh, was wagon racing, um, I owed to uh, that horse or my dad. And, you know, when we were running last year, we had an unfortunate incident where he took a wrong step during the High River Show and he, uh, he slowed down a little bit, which isn't his style. And he just started limping and my heart just sunk. And then the vet um, went out there and x-rayed him and then they called me and they said that it was broke and there was just too much damage in there. And they wanted to put him down and I said, no, uh, we're not putting this horse down. I mean, you just don't. You, you retire athletes like that, you don't put them down. But I told him six times that I I wanted him to do, to do the surgery. And uh, finally said, uh, okay, I understand. This horse doesn't owe you anything. And that was it. They did the surgery. He still likes seeing the other horses. He whinnies, he gets kind of cocky. He gallops out in the field. He gets sore after he gallops a little bit. He's not without care, but uh, he's alive. And uh, that beats the alternative that horse will, will die of natural causes. Racing, it's in the Fraser blood. And when there's no racing on the track, this family still needs to get its fix. I'll stay right on his back bumper until the last lap tonight. We'll draft off him on the home stretch and beat him. It's not all wagon racing all summer. We like to try and get out to uh just different venues in the different cities that we go to in towns so and we ended up go-karting. Go Cody and his dad love to do that. I get in there too. I 
I thought I had him on the outside, and I went to, to pass him to that. <laughs> the wall came in a big hurry. I didn't do nothing. I was waiting for her. I was blocking her from Cody so we could have a little race. A woman driver, right there. No matter what track he's on, Rick races to win. With no official protest on the cart interference, Rick takes the checkered flag. It's a new dawn. The Sutherlands get the news everyone wants to hear. Tonight, the chuck wagons will race. Now, it's a dash to load up and roll. Always a rush around here. Doesn't seem to matter what day it is. Normally, you don't get out of race mode in the summer. It's you know, there's either days that you're racing wagons or days that you're waiting to race wagons, and that goes for three months. And you know, that's just all there is. Kelly arrives at the track with his game face on. He's 22 points out of the lead in the world standings, with three drivers ahead of him. My object is to run tough and steady and clean and, uh, you know, try to gain a lot of ground in the, in the average. There is some rain showers out there. Hopefully we'll be able to get in all of our heats tonight. Fair racing for all. Under blue skies, race fans pack the stands in Lethbridge. And we do this in Lethbridge, Medicine Hat, and Drum Heller, where we have uh, the three wagons. Now a two-day event, the Rocky Mountain Turf Club Derby is anybody's race. And they're off to the great start all across the board. The stoves are in. Outriders mount up. Ryan Mann up the middle. And Camp Charette steals a rail with Shane Carter starting them on the outside, trying to close some ground and a posse of outriders right on his Demoted to the earlier heats, Mark readies for his assault on the world standings. In an exhibition, Mark smokes him by a horse like Camp Charette will be second. But his horses may have other ideas. There's a horn in the rock in a hurry. Good start for Kirk Sutherland on that one barrel D in the electric. Can he get out there and steal the rail away? He can. Nephew Mark Sutherland takes the early lead around the outside with underground enterprises. Cranker up, buddy. Mark Sutherland and Uncle Kirk are dueling it out in the backstretch. Mark Sutherland, underground oil field consulting ahead by a nose, but look at Kirk Sutherland closing ground. Opens him up a notch with his chrome smoke chuck wagon. D in the electric now. He's got that real advantage in the lead by a neck. Hit behind him by two. Gonna have us a three wagon race in a finish line. Kirk Sutherland on the inside. Mark Sutherland up the middle. Kirk Sutherland by a horse length. Mark Sutherland will be second. And David Bentford. More frustration for Mark. When horses falter off the start, it's tough to recover on the track. The right leader didn't really want to stand. And I'm not sure if it's this crazy weather we're having. Uh, when he went, the wheel team thought it was time to go, and they punched it. And uh, you know, I just stopped him. Chance uh, did a real good job of getting them set again. And uh, and then the horn went. When they went, that right leader jumped in the air again. So. Um, you know, that's the same outfit that I won day money with last show, and that's, that's the difference. That's why I always, you know, you always got to give credit to the horses, because when they work, it's easy, and when they don't work, that's, you know, that's when it's tough to drive, and if I finish halfway in the pack after that run, I'll be, I'll be happy. When drivers experiment to find the right lineup, mistakes happen. But sometimes it comes down to nothing more than bad luck. I think guys are experimenting a little bit. You know, I, I know that that happens. I mean, guys are trying to figure out what to drive and how to get tough here when the money comes up. The other thing in wagon racing, for some reason, you'll have one night that goes sideways. I don't know what it is, but all hell breaks loose. And I mean, there is penalties everywhere. Dorchester, he's got some stall problems. Front end will take a hold. 
In heat number six, it becomes one of those nights. The outside of him, oh, Troy's got a problem. He's pulling up. I can see a Ryan wrapped around the right leg of that right wheel horse. He's going to stop him right there. Good job, guys. Good motion there by Troy. Saved that horse's life doing that game. Out in front. Leo Turney way down. The horses are stopped, but Troy Dorchester must wait at the side of the track until the race ends. Only when the wagon's clear can he safely sort his mess. BJB Foothill pulled up right out of the infield, his right wheel horse and his leg wrapped in line and over that even dirty avoided any injury there by getting that done. Wow. Dorchester escapes disaster, but moments later, Floyd Bradshaw isn't so lucky. He's underway, good start right across the field, and here comes Floyd Bradshaw. Ray Jr. make a left turn, little buddy. Hang on, stay back from the fence. Ray Jr. and Floyd Bradshaw are hooked. Look and wheels, they're going to try and get themselves unhooked. Scary moments in the wagon business for those guys. After a harmless looking incident, driver Floyd Bradshaw collapses behind the chutes. It's night number one at the Rocky Mountain Turf Club Derby. In the seventh heat, driver Floyd Bradshaw completes his barrel turn and guides his team to the track. But Ray Crotto's wagon collides with Floyd's. As the wagon wheels lock, Floyd bounces out of his seat. The incident looks harmless. But when the race is over, Bradshaw doubles over in pain. We all had a good start. Coming around my top, I looked over to see where Ray Jr. was at. And I don't know whether he had equipment problems or what, but he T-boned me right at the bottom of his barrel. Our wheels were locked together. When you lock wheels and horses like that, things can go real bad in a hurry. And when I laid down straight down, I heard the bones crack a little bit, and man, that was, it was, cracked my ribs at that point. Finally got back up and grabbed the lines, going into the second turn. But by then, I couldn't get my wind back. I couldn't pull anything. To rule out the possibility of internal injuries, Floyd is taken to a nearby hospital. He will miss the rest of the event. So get the start we need. Still searching for a lineup that works, Chad Harden is willing to try just about anything. I want to move some horses up on the lead that have been working on the wheel, and I want to keep moving things around so we get some number one and two teams that are actually guaranteed a top day money every day. There's a horn and a flying start. Elliman right and hit for the track. Chad Harden and the mortgage center on the inside. Herman Flat. The barrels are standing. The outriders are mounted. The combination runs hard, which puts Chad in direct competition with the speedy Jason Glass. Going into the third corner, he got tight on me, and I didn't want to get him hurt, so I had to move my whole team over and actually hit the rail with my left wheel. Brothers auction market to hit by half a length. Chad Harden on the inside. The market center lending him some ground as they go down that back stretch. It's a tight race. Too tight for a driver already short on horsepower. His excuse was that well, I didn't hit nothing. Well, yeah, he didn't get hit nothing. I put my whole team over the rail pretty well, but you know, it was fortunate nobody got hurt. Slide and glide to the wire. Chad Harden answers the call, but Jason Glass is going to hang on. Why do you want to run into my wheeler? Under the judge's watchful eyes, no penalties are assessed. But Chad sees things differently. It was just a misjudgment on his call or, or something of mine might have moved going into the corner, but mine were running tight against the rail as it was, and I had to move him over some more. Because if you pull, you pull him off stride, and that might set him up to get ran over by a wagon. You know, I just couldn't afford a horse. Or... 
The Edmonton Oilers are in the Stanley Cup Finals, and Chad flies the team flag out of his wagon. He's fifth in the show and in a great position to win it all. Of all the gems in Kelly Sutherland's crown, there's one that still eludes him. I've never uh, won Lethbridge. It's one of the few shows that I haven't, but you know, hopefully this year things will change. There's the horn, the charge is underway. Good start as Kelly Sutherland flies off. My start wasn't all that good. Like the whole B team wasn't paying attention, but when they left, they really left. And when I turned the top, they just exploded. And I managed to get ahead of Buddy Vince Miller, maybe three or four feet, so I could drop down in front of him and save myself going three wide. Got up alongside Neil, and, and uh, him and I run neck and neck, and then he opened up a little bit there coming home and uh, beat me by, you know, horse length or whatever. If you get hung out three wide, you're not even going to get a smell here on this bull ring, this half mile racetrack. He is second in his heat with a fast time. Kelly will finish third overall on the day. In his quest for the pot of gold, Rick Fraser is currently second in the world standings. Like Kelly, Rick has his own issues with this half mile. It's not one of my favorites, but, and the reason it's not one of my favorites is just I haven't done that well here on a consistent basis. Tonight, Rick hopes all that will change. There's a horn and they're off in a hurry. Reg Johnstone, I told you he was the Pashaw Flash. He flashes into the lead. Lord Cuthbertson, Rod Streeper trucking has that rail. He's dueling it out for second and third with Rick Fraser and Dom's drywall supplies. The two used out by side by side. Now they're driving wagons side by side. They're all in hot pursuit. And here he comes to the wire, Reg Johnstone. Wire to wire with his wheels on fire. It's a strong run that puts Rick in the top 10, well positioned for tomorrow's finish. With day one complete, everyone is anxious to hear the results. Kelly Sutherland is in fourth at 240 points. Neil Walsh is fifth at Mark's chances of saving the season are fading away. After the race, Rick finds out that his outrider, Jason Lemieux, was late. The one second penalty drops him out of the top 10 and into 16th. Rick is on the hunt for his outrider. Rick's good time on day one in Lethbridge has been nullified by a late outrider. He fumes as he waits for the explanation. The outriding penalties is outrider's fault and hitting barrels is the driver's fault. I know I've hit my share. It's never been the horse's fault yet. Horn went and he got the stove loaded, which is good, and uh, then the horse went left, he said. That in turn made him late. The outriders do come over eventually once they get back to the barns and, and things settle, I guess, and uh, so he did come over. I didn't care for the look on his face. Chance to take it to the castle top. I took the castle top, trying to get on him, and he went to the left. I'm not lying. I got on him just about the top three girl. Rick and I discussed it, and of course, Rick is disappointed. Um, but if he would have come on, come back to the barns and said, hey, I screwed up, it's my fault, then it wouldn't be so bad. But when they come back and have a smirk on their face, and oh, the horse did this and the horse did that. And yeah, sometimes the horse does screw up, but the rider should be in control. Well, I'm sure I didn't pinch him with the lead line. You need to get on the friggin' horse. My river coming right through. Yeah, absolutely. Yes, absolutely.
Racing may be over for the night, but for Chad, the work has only begun. Sponsors pay a lot of money to buy a tarp and have the drivers attend their events. This is the first year I've actually been able to attend this lobster thing. Every other year it's been a little earlier where I've been racing, so this will be the first year, so it's pretty, gonna be pretty entertaining, I'm pretty sure. Now what do I do with this thing? Grab your phone. Okay. This? This is way too long. And you can start fishing out the meat. Yeah. 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 I from inside. I think I want to take your steak. <laughs> See a lobster go across the room, it's going to go pretty soon. Yeah, I think so. I'll be pretty skinny if I do this every day. Just a little. Chad may be having a good time, but his wife is not. More time with sponsors means less time with family. And Chad's pregnant wife, Dory, has had enough. I have not a clue where he is at at any given moment. Um, if he's not at the barn or the trailer, he could be at 35 other truck wagon drivers' camps. He can be at a sponsor event. He could be downtown for a breakfast. And um, I'm finding it more difficult, actually, this time around because um, I'm pregnant and I've got uh, feelings. Chad Hart is my introduce. We've been watching Chad for three years, become friends with him, love him and his family. I'd like you guys all to give him a cowboy Yahoo on the It's the other side of the sponsorship coin. Chad raised more money than any other driver on the tour, and he delivers off the track. He's, just, he's such a big part. <laughs> but all that sponsor time comes at a price. I feel like, um, you know what, why am I here? Then I know that it's time to go to my trailer and have a little cry myself and then carry on the next day. The next day is Father's Day, and the Sutherlands are up early to celebrate. I typically make a, a good breakfast for everyone, a Father's Day breakfast. Kids are finally old enough this year that they're going to help me cook. You can show them what you made. Okay. Dad. The kids have actually been working lots on uh, making Dad a scrapbook. We've, we've been holding uh, newspaper articles since 1994 and I haven't got it all together, so that was our goal for Father's Day this year, was to get it done for him. That was that year they set the track record, or Jerry did, and then Neil did it the next year. My kids know I love them and they know they're important to me, and uh, I don't think they'll ever know how important they are until they have kids of their own. It's just another day that you recognize that they're there in your life. And, um, that's kind of the way I approach all the holidays, uh, except my anniversary. <laughs> that one we, we really have to make a big deal about. <laughs> Some of the drivers talk about they you know, the hope their son doesn't get into wagons. And I can't understand that. It doesn't make sense to me. You know, honestly, it'll be a travesty if my son doesn't at least attempt it. Uh, it's the greatest thing in the world outside of what's important, which is family. This is a special day, even for Kelly Sutherland, a man not known to wear his heart on his sleeve. Hopefully my wife will arrive in time for Father's Day. I've been missing her. She's been back at Grand Prairie. I'm tough to live with at the best of times, let alone when wagon racing is on. So I'm just hoping that she shows up uh, and I get a call from both of my daughters. Dad's, I guess, similar to me. It's um, always nice to be appreciated, as long as it only takes 10 or 15 minutes out of your day. We found the perfect card this year for you. Can you tell me? Thank you, thank you. A typical father-son relationship is when you're 12 years old, he tells you to go cut the lawn. If you don't cut the lawn, he kicks your ass. That's the deal. I mean, I want him to do the best, and he wants me to do the best. So that's why. I mean, if we think we can help each other, we, we tell each other. I'm just lucky enough that he's my dad, and I can talk to him every day. The best thing that could happen in, uh, for me on a Father's Day is have my kid run first and me run second. My greatest hope is that my dad is still racing um, when my son is, and uh, that'll be great. That would be awesome. I love you, Dad. Love, Shayana. Father's Day with the Hartons means Chad is home, even if only for a little while. Happy Father's Day.
Daughters Montana and Cheyenne surprise dad with sandals and homemade cards. But their sponsor-driven father has a surprise of his own. Um, I might find out today if I'm going to Carolina tonight or tomorrow morning. Surprise! It's Father's Day in Lethbridge, and Chad Harton has a surprise for Dory. I might find out today if I'm going to Carolina tonight or tomorrow morning. At nine months pregnant, it's something Dory doesn't want to hear. Who's going? I think four of us. Four of you are flying to Carolina for the game. She knows I'm a big Oilers fan. I mean, I had to miss all these games, and it's actually the only one that I, so far due to rain conditions, that I can actually go attend. It's a little ways to go, but. I think it might be worthwhile to go. When were you going to spring this on me? Well, I just found out last night. You just woke oh, up. You didn't want to wake me up? No, no. <laughs> I can't believe you're even considering it. Well, I have to go if the sponsor wants to go. It's all about the sponsor, right. I always got the excuse that, well, the sponsor says I got to go, or, you know, you never know there's a potential sponsor there. So I use it to my advantage lots, too, and she's really good with it. If I wouldn't take care of that sponsor, you wouldn't got a pedicure and manicure here, though. Right. Yeah, I know it's all you're doing. Jewelry! 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 You know what? At this Lethbridge show, Chad, the sponsor does like me, too. I don't see him sponsoring your tarp. Baby. <laughs> that dad, he's something special, hey? It's tough. It's tough. I can't believe that he uh, is even considering going. That is unbelievable. We are busy. We are having a baby. It's all about the sponsor. It's all about the sponsor, he keeps telling me. But you know what? I could have this baby tonight, and I bet he'd still go. There's a barn crew that can take care of her. <laughs> they'll, they'll get her to the hospital, and I'm sure she'll be all right. It's not the first child, so she'll be OK with it. Oh, yeah. The joys of living with Chad Harden. Happy Father's Day. <laughs> <laughs> Rick doesn't want gifts. He wants a letter from the heart. Oh. <laughs> cool. Happy Father's Day. I love you, Cody. You're a cool dad. <laughs> I remember writing him a little note and when I was really little, and he still has it in his wallet. It's sort of falling apart, but he still kept it. Very nice. Mm. It's from the girl. Dear Dad, where to start? The last couple of years have brought us many happy, sad, good, bad, and dirty times with <laughs> no regrets. This past winter, I was fortunate to have you there taking me to my barrel racing and letting us, me and Bean, take the truck on all those Wednesdays. I'm so lucky to have you as my dad. All the awesome opportunities I've been given are unbelievable by many. <laughs> Easy, Susie. Uh, thank you for always being there for me. In the rough and rocky times, I'm listening to your song. Tough little boys. You know, when tough little boys grow up to be dads, they turn into big babies again. I see, I will see you in a couple days and have a great fun-filled day. Love you. Mom, too. <laughs> Love Kaylee. She that was very me. nice. He loves his kids to death, and uh, they mean a lot. And this spring has been really hard for him, because we both know that they're they're growing up and they're going to take their different paths and he said you know they're not coming with us anymore we need to quit wagon racing i said rick you know you're not wagon racing for them it's not their passion it's yours and he's a very good dad very good truck wagons when we come in three days so billy you said yeah, they've got all the equipment here, and they certainly know how to maintain a fast track here in Lethbridge. Wagons are out onto the track, fellas, for heat number one. So, John and Billy, when you're ready, let's tell everybody. He's 31st in the world standings. Tonight, Mark Sutherland needs to continue that long climb back to 21st spot, where he'll qualify for the prestige and the money of next year's Calgary Stampede. All Mark has to do is run solid. I mean, he's got to run solid in the top 10. He's got two outfits, and if he 
keeps his head about him, you know, he's going to have no problem qualifying for Calgary. Just gain points, gain points. And it, it's tough on those guys when they're in them early heats. They got to throw big runs every once in a while to, to bolt themselves up. Horn sounds, the charge is underway. Good start right across the board. Mark gets the start he needs. He hits the track out in front and holds off the other wagons. When you're out there and you're ripping and, you know, horn goes and it's, uh, I don't know. I've never tried skydiving, but I'm going to sometime. Crossing the finish line first, and everything worked good, and you just feel that power of those horses. All your hard work's paid off. The resulting points move him up eight spots in the world standings, one short of qualifying for next year's Calgary Stampede. It was a tough first night for Chad Harden. A close encounter with Jason Glass has Chad looking to even the score. Basically a little bit of redemption, hopefully tonight, if I can beat him out there tonight, stuff him in a hole and see what, how, how he likes it, but hopefully he doesn't get that carried away. There's a horn, they're off in a hurry, good start for Chad Harden, here comes Herman Flat off the three-barrel Jason. Glass outturns Harden and steals the rail. Chad Harden up the middle and Lady Luck on the outside with Herman Flat there. Just started pulling on him a little bit because I knew if I run the left leader any closer to the... Jason's wagon, he doesn't like to quit, he'll run right into the wagon box, so I got a safety up a little bit with him on there just because he doesn't ever stop, he'll run right through a brick wall if he had a chance to. All Chad can do is watch as Glass takes the heat. Chad Harden squeaks through to be second with National Bank. But a strong finish still gives him sixth place for the Lethbridge show. As for his standings on the home front, Chad will find out tomorrow if he's going to Carolina for the Stanley Cup and how his wife, Dory, really feels about the trip. In the Sutherland barn, personalities have clashed for the last time. Dudley and Kling kind of pushed each other and Dudley just grabbed him and choked him out to the point where I had to get in and break it up. Clean pulls the plug on Mark and Kelly. While the departure may be a surprise to the king, others have a different opinion. He was on the outside, you know, but he put himself on the outside. He'll finish off the season with Kelly's brother, Kirk. Kirk's a lot easier to work for. He's a lot more laid back, relaxed. There were some times that I just wanted to kill him. It was going to get ugly in a hurry, I'll say that much. Clean took off once, started working with Kurt, and I couldn't believe it. I was happy. I was so happy. I was thrilled. Two heats remain. Kelly Sutherland is less than a second behind longtime rival Reg Johnstone. He has one chance to win the Derby and end his Lethbridge drought. Okay, superstars one and all. This is a superstar race. Kelly Sutherland turning one, Neil Walshenbaugh off two, and Buddy Ben. Less than a second short of his first Lethbridge title, Kelly Sutherland needs a good, clean run to catch leader Reg Johnstone. Horn sounds, and they're off in a hurry. Good start right across the field. Buddy from the outside, Neil up the middle. Kelly Sutherland on the rail, Triwell oil field. Three of the best in the game, and they're all going to hold them across the track with outriders in tow. Kelly Sutherland, a veteran of some 38 years, laying right on Neil Walsh and Bob. They're banging a little steel as they go at it wheel to wheel. Kelly on the inside, Neil on the outside, and a familiar sight we've seen so many times for the last 20 or so years. 
Kelly and Neal pulling it out. Buddy Ben Miller, Woody's RV World Captain behind. Stalking the leaders, knows that he's going to have to be on Kelly's stool bracket, tight to that rail if he's going to get in the money today. Triwell Oil Field Construction. Leaders in the industry. Kelly has it. Leaders in that fourth turn only by a horse length. And now Neil Wojenbach, Super 8, holds him tight, opens him up, and a two-wagon race to the wire. Neil Wojenbach with a comeback, but no. Kelly settled by a head. Neil Wojenbach. Down the stretch, Kelly wins his heat. But will his two-day combined times be good enough to win the Derby? Oh, that was a great race. Going to be a quick time, I'm sure. It's down to the final heat. And it was as close to a photo finish as we're going to get. Reg has to beat Kelly and uh, Neil as well because, of course, they're still in the running and uh, we don't have their times yet. Racing against Rick Fraser, Reg Johnstone owns the quickest time from day one. After last night's penalty problems, Rick's outrider Jason Lemieux can't afford to make a mistake. Norm Cuthbertson smoking Norm. He's off number two. And Rick Fraser off of barrel number three, the pride and joy of Grand Prairie. So they're all set and ready to go. Should have a fast one, boys. There's the horde, and they're off. Stoves are in. Mount up both riders, because here comes Rick Fraser from the outside, and Rich Johnstone from the inside, and Norm Cuthbertson to follow. Rex Johnstone, DA Electric, can he get himself a second consecutive championship? He's going to give her all he's got right now. Johnstone, DA Electric, flips the switch, turns up the power. He's a track record specialist. Missed it last night by 78 one hundreds. He's gunning for another one tonight. He's ahead now by a length and a quarter. Rick Fraser, Don's drywall supplies on the outside. Norm Cuthbertson with three horses running hard. He's got some equipment problems. He is running third by a full length and a half now. But it's Rex Johnstone, DA Electric, smoking him around that fourth third. The Bashaw Flash headed for the wire with his wheels on fire. DA Electric, Rex Johnstone smokes him by a length. Rick Fraser will be second, Dom's Drywell, Norm Comforts, and Rod Streamer truck and rolls in to be third in heat number 12. And successfully defending his Rocky Mountain Turf Club Derby Championship once again this year, it's Reg Johnstone, DNA Electric, two-day combined time. Reg Johnstone's two-day combined time is more than enough to take the Derby title for the second straight year. Rick runs penalty-free, so Lemieux keeps his job for now. Their strong performances here in Lethbridge have put Rick Fraser and Kelly Sutherland in the top four of the world standings. They will now race in the same heat for the next show. Though Rick is unaware, there's trouble, big trouble, just around the corner. Thank you.